Crack Life is a mod. Crack Life is a mod for Half Life. Crack Life is an edgy mod for Half Life. As per mod's description, it's an inept, racist, and offensive mod made out of total boredom. It features a bunch of overused jokes and memes that only get annoying every time you hear them. The mod was initially released in 2012, where it was actually accurate to the description, with things that I'm not allowed to say running around the maps. It was a simple replacer, yes, which reworked many of the enemies and weapons, but honestly that's it. There are no new mechanics or levels, and the jokes start being obnoxious about an hour into the experience. Lo and behold, a couple of months ago, we have been blessed with the anniversary edition of the mod, which fixed as many of the lackeys of the original, whilst adding a little bit of instability into the mix. Now, as the dust had settled, I can finally go out and play the fixed version, which doesn't feature crashing as one of its main selling points. Oh god damn it! So, we are once again pulling to the rail card, and this time around we are still Gordon Freeman, who is uh, of quite an interesting description. We are employed in a Ugandan research facility called Black Beat. A couple of bucks later, we found ourselves on a catwalk, which is blocked by those two guys, who make me skip the introduction. Ah, <laughs> oh, goddammit, we are off to a great start, innit? Welcome to the first chapter, Anomalous Mat- <laughs> Welcome to the first chapter. Just like old times, so huh, my dear Impulse 101? Here we are experiencing firsthand the insanity that this mod provides. Security guards are now Eastern European Gopniks, scientists are a work of science themselves, and in and around the facility there are random NPCs just scattered around, like Gus! Everyone, say hello to Gus! What do you want from me? Can't you see I'm busy here? In this chapter we find the only side mission in the game, kill all monkeys as they broke the containment and start killing everyone and everything in their path. They are not difficult to take down as the crowbar, my primary weapon for the rest of the game, is surprisingly strong and can face through walls, at least kind of. Soon enough we come across a scientist who promises us to get us out of this place, however it was a ruse as he was the man behind the slaughter. His goal was to return humanity back to monkey and then rule over them I guess, um, it was never explained. With the help of a scimitar that was certainly not taken from RuneScape, we defeat him in restoring balance to- Oh fuck, I forgot about- The Resonance Cascade and its consequences have been a disaster for black meat. After the disaster we are met with a sudden realization that I can't make fun of Vortigans anymore as it will put me on multiple hit lists, both squids are controlled by chickens, and worst of all, the game crashed. After meeting the survivors, we are introduced to gentlemen headcrabs, who have those adorable top hats and finally obtain the crow scalibur. The main difference between the normal crowbar and the crack life one is that you can throw it via old fire, making it viable, I mean somewhat weak weapon. Whatever, I'll take it. In the upper layers of Sector C, we are met with headcrab zombies, who, just like their small and cousins, are sporting a top hat, but this time around with a mustache. Their main gimmick is that they are supposed to be like those incredible duelers, but I don't particularly care about this because Crowbar doesn't activate their sick dodge skills. Everything is fine until they don't pull out a gun and kill you. In the locker room, we meet the bane of this playthrough, the Pink Panther. This boss erapes you every time you cause a damage to him, moves incredibly fast and deals decent amount of damage, and given that this is one of the monsters in the random pool, he became really, really annoying really fast. Since we touched the subject, every time you load into a new map, a game randomly places new enemies, with two main stages, the pre-cascade one and the post-cascade one. The first stage is a representation of Blackmeat employees rising to oppose the oppressive science team akin to a workers' revolution, and the second one represents just your classic alien invasion, including such famous aliens like Elvis, Big Panther, women, and hazmat suit scientists. To visualize what I'm talking about, here are a couple of examples. From this, to this. From this, to this. Honestly, it's a pretty impressive system and makes the game very unpredictable, ranging from making the stage easy to downright softlocking the Half-Life in some places. Later on, after meeting Gina, who wants to kill me with a rocket launcher, I stumble across Hound Eyes, who produced the most annoying sound in the world. Additionally, in here I meet VOCs, who I may or may not have sent to the great border dimension in the sky. I jump over the Akira reference and meet my first Redditor in the sewers. Redditors are overweight scientists who have a katana and they charge at you. Basically, if you have seen this video we can get the picture. Also they have a tendency to teleport behind you and hit you for a hefty amount of damage. Hello my fellow anime girls, welcome to your mom's OnlyFans accounting center. <laughs> 
in here, not has changed outside of once again not being able to rescue that security guard, but once again rescuing him is kind of pointless as he can't trust anyone in this mod, and that triggered scene with the sentry not working properly due to random spawns, at least I think it didn't work because of it. Uh, also here I started having regrets about ever caving into peer pressure. RUN! What is going on? No! Stop! What is... What? What? What is going... Oh no! What the... No! 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 Also, I like how they nerfed this fragment. Whereas in the original game there were two, three zombies here, due to their sheer power in the mod, their number has been reduced to only one, which is kinda weird because that's the only place in the entire mod where this happens. In the fridge I was attacked by two redditors, and I would like to note another thing done by the mod. All the ambient noise is replaced by music, most notably the I Love Beijing Tiananmen, the Hong Kong 97 loop, and the first few seconds from the Dance of the Man Whore, which thanks to this mod now lives rent free in my head. Right for the office because I was so down with his BS, I landed in the next chapter, my ass was heavy, where after loading up on 8s and HEV charging stations, I was thrown into the storage facilities against shirtless marines, who behaved quite similarly to their original counterparts with one, well, two major differences. Firstly, as the HECU talks so much about booty, it's difficult to call them like that, so I'll just refer to them as ASS soldiers instead, I think it's quite fitting. Regardless, the bakery enthusiasts also have Rambo inspired attack, where they just pull the trigger so hard that if you don't move you have a very meager chances at survival. Thankfully this attack is still within the boundaries of hitscan and also can be performed on the move, so unless I'm sleeping or have low health I'm not going to have many problems with it. Speaking of not many problems, let's talk about Gina. So she appears as one of the randomly generated monsters and she slowly makes her way towards you and if you don't break sidelines with her, she'll shoot her rocket launcher at you and most of the time she helps me with clearing out certain stages as opposed to being a nuisance, so thanks Gina. The stroll on the surface ended really fast as I didn't want to really deal with anything that was happening there, so I made a wild dash towards the bunker and after a couple of minutes I found myself in the guard room and opened the only way out of this hellhole, the silo door. Hello everyone, not the Gev here, welcome to Aspid. So it's going to be a really, really hot, 500 degrees Celsius hot take, but this chapter is 100% better than what was presented in the Black Mesa remake. Sure the spectacle is worse than the original, however, you can for example sneak around the tentacles just by walking, which is completely absent from the remake, as we probably know from the Hyphen video. If, if, you are, if you don't know, just go and watch it, haha, <laughs> yeah self promotion, yoohoo. Sure I can distract the hentai with my crowbars, but then again, it's not like the crowbar is the strongest weapon in the game already. After learning the hard way that the headcraft zombies are in fact one of the strongest opponents in the game, I finally managed to power up the rocket and avert the hentai threat once and for all. Ah! <laughs> Power Slam is the next chapter on the chopping block where you are forced to fight Viking Gargantua. As per tradition, I wanted to skip the chapter via Laserman staircase, although, due to some map alteration, I literally could not progress, which is absolutely so crushing due to the fact that I have to play like a normal human being for once. Why are those two guys randomly standing here? Long story short, we need to power up some generators or whatever and kill the Yarga. Wait, where is it? Did, did Kina kill it? Excuse me? <laughs> The section with ASS units was an absolute pit scan hell, and I would love to say something about it, but really, the whole thing could be just summed up as corner abusing. Lots and lots and lots of corner abusing. <laughs> Who would have thought that this game would turn into blood all of a sudden? Also the hound eyes? Yeah, they got eviscerated by either the hazmat guy on pick fanfare, which is a sentence that I would never expect to say aloud. With my car being powered up, I could finally proceed to... Oh! That's pretty convenient, thank you. Yes, Crack Life skipped an entire chapter, that being an RL. And I can understand the infamy that this chapter has, but it feels pretty cheap, but eh, it will at least make doing this video a little bit easier because I'm also a victim of getting lost in that place. The aquarium is a chapter which has probably the most drastic kind of placement. We are ambushed by ASS grass and thrown into flooded parts of black meat, and we are forced to fight our way through it, avoiding big fishes, random enemies, and crash. What? What is going on? Oh my god.
No, you know what happened? You know what happened? I know exactly what happened. What? The, the scientist was going to attack the... The gas. But since you killed the gas, when he wanted to attack, he, he pointed to a no... A, a thing that doesn't, like, didn't exist anymore. So the game crashed. In the Ichthyosaur introduction chamber, there is a, certainly a party going on there. Damn. Due to the difficulty, that being hard, Furry Corbas at the Big Fish is as futile as looking for a good Sabaton album. Eventually though, I managed to kill it and when... Nah, just kidding, I drowned. Yo, underwater gas! Hey, don't mind me, it's just a detour. Refrigerator is the high water mark of spawning. Like, look at it, it's ridiculous. And better yet, when I'm out of the giant fridge, the spawns just don't stop, they just keep coming. With two pink panthers being done, I can proceed to the corridor and, uh, let's say I had some difficulties. In the Assassin's introduction, the game crashed. After that minor setback, we are being beaten down by two ASS grounds that surprisingly weren't altered in any form if it comes to dialogue, and uh... Yeah. So what happened here, at least what I think it happened, is that a Redditor teleported behind me and killed me when I was in the cutscene state, which is really funny until I realized that I have to repeat the whole section. Great. Anyway, I wake up in Co-3 Compactor, and after stopping the crushers, I obtain the crowbar, allowing me to proceed towards the stewards. Welcome to Mugbanger Vor Stomach Place. <laughs> and this is probably the most interesting change to the chapter. Really, what was the thought behind letting us skip on a rail but not ready to processing? <laughs> Double standards, I tell you. Well, anyway, jump jump and we are done with this chapter. Can we go into the questioning questionable questions? Thank you. Triple Q introduces alien... Uh, fairies? The chapter is mostly unchanged compared to Black Mesa, outside of the obvious lack of battle at the end of the chapter. That means we still have to go through some random laps of three scientists that somehow did not get mangled by all this spawning mess out there, which is really impressive, honestly. Surf Ascension is the chapter that I was most anxious about, honestly. How I test mods in Half-Life 1 is to run through the first map of SD and see if I do well or not, and here, um... Let's just say it wasn't really sunshine and rainbows, let's put it like that. Because of the spawns and not being familiar with the mod, I had difficulties even reaching the dam, not to mention getting past the chopper. Turns out, my fears weren't exactly justified. Yes, I still had to wait like 10 minutes for the chopper to NKVD the big fish, but other than that, this section was relatively painless. Similar to the part which is located between the canyon and the dam. The canyon was more of a trial and error, however, after some time I got past it without destroying the chopper, because unlike Black Mesa, you don't have to harm any airborne targets to progress. The tank section is more puzzling, as I had to beat the sections with whopping 4 health, making this a test of patience more than anything else. Peekaboo, Pikada, you get the point. Oh yeah, unlike Black Mesa, you can actually damage the tank with literally anything, because it's a destructible prop. The sniper section was also a bit surprising, as I was capable of killing snipers via my crowbars. Well, if they were exposed enough. Then there was a funny laser mine room, and we land on the elevator section, which due to Gina spawning along with a couple of grants made this one fragment a living hell. Speaking of double hockey sticks, the next two sections are an absolute nightmare! So, Bradley comes in and is accompanied by ASS infantry, which makes it troublesome already, given their hitscan nature, but additionally, the AAV also uses a hitscan, or at least a very fast projectile, which makes the task of taking it down somewhat challenging. Nonetheless, just like the previous vehicles, it goes down with some trial and error. In the alleyway, there is also a sniper which I couldn't reach with my crowbar just now. When it forced me to be quite careful and jump from cover to cover, in hopes of my ass not receiving a second hole. The barracks were just a quick save galore, as I didn't have enough HP to take the grunts head on, forcing me into corner peak. And if you are wondering, the armory upstairs turned out to be useless. And now you might be asking, how did I deal with Osprey? And I gotta say, this is a great question. 
The answer for this is that I just simply ignored it, because as I previously stated, you don't need to destroy any airborne targets in Half-Life unlike the remake. The ambush in the garage was easily dispatched, although not by me, but by the Pink Panther, and I basically ran through the next section. In the closing areas of the surface tension, I enjoy a pretty substantial range advantage over the grunts, both ASS and Fairy alike. And here in land on a problem, as I am forced to use console commands due to the security guards not being able to open the infinite health door for some reason. I know, I know, I'm a terrible content creator, but you can leave the comment I like putting down below to prove how much you dislike me for this cowardly decision. Anyway, the tunnel is filled with random NPCs, making the chase sequence that you are supposed to have with the gargantuan completely tensionless, no pun intended. Fast forward, boom boom, welcome to my ass is heavy. No, it's not a mistake, the author called two chapters like that. I got into the outskirts of the Lambda complex, and I get again into the sewers, which are a little bit convoluted than those in Black Mesa. Same could be said about the next section as well, as in the original you had to deal with like two guys and a tank, along with a turret, formerly most likely being placed courtesy of Dario Kazali. Now in the garage I do pretty much what I did in the Black Mesa playthrough, and I go down to do something more interesting while both sides beat the absolute shit out of each other and then mop up the winners. Welcome to Lambda Cock! In this place we will have the pleasure of once again facing the Black Ops, which in reality is once again running from them from like the fourth time at this point. Then, I meet face to face with the final boss of the game. Gas the forklift operator. Ah, Freeman, so you finally arrived. I'll finally make you pay for those years of oppression by you and your peers and everyone will fear me. Gus, the forklift operator. So the Lambda Complex goes as usual, and outside of me having a couple of mental breakdowns because of the mod, it was fine. After connecting the pumps, I get to the main core, where I once again get softlocked, and I am forced to use Noclip because of one of the pumps refuses to function, and then I use teleporters to get into the main chambers of the complex. One big fight with VOCs and fairy grunts later, I get to the survey team prep room and get briefed that blah blah alien force, blah blah powerful alien, blah blah you have to kill him or whatever, I don't care, I didn't pay attention anyway. I obtain the long gen module and as soon as I'm ready to leave the safety of the decompression, I... Fail? What? As it turns out, there is an NPC that is shooting at the scientist that operates the teleporter, pretty much softlocking me, AGAIN! So after a couple of tries to neutralize him, I get a good enough rotation and I'm allowed to proceed forward. We get attacked by alien controllers and soon enough, we arrive at ground zero. Welcome to Eastern Europe, Shemka's home. This is the final level, and the only thing you can do here is to interact with this guy who sells you some Lithuanian delicacy. If you press the button, the final encounter will start, with you being pitched against hazard-clad scientists. If you dispatch enough of them, a big scientist who uses Frank Horrigan voice lines appears, and if you kill him, you can finally taste the meat you are after, which makes you go insane, and thus ends the mod. So, that has been Crack Life, so if you want to see more of this stuff, consider liking and subscribing, and... Hey, maybe even join my Discord, because yes, I am having a Discord server, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's honestly it, so, uh, yeah. I'm probably most likely going to do either Half-Life expansions or go into the other Half-Life inspired games, but, yeah, that's honestly has been it, so, till next time, I guess.